other colorist joining this video. Today we are going to finish up Nutcracker and that is from Hannah Lynn's A Whimsy Girl's Christmas coloring book. Um, so all we have left to color is the Nutcracker and then all the final details which um, I made a list. Hopefully I get to all of them and um, I'm a little bit rushed this morning because my cat kind of set me back. Um, he decided to knock over one of my plants last night all over everything in my art room. So um, I cleaned up a fair bit of that last night, but a lot of it I had to do this morning so it's just I was too exhausted and just irritated to deal with it last night. So kind of put me a little bit behind schedule, so if I seem a little rushed, I apologize. Um, because of that, I'm not even going to bother getting my swatches out. Um, we haven't used swatches for the last three parts of this video. Hopefully you guys don't mind. So, for the Nutcracker, what I was thinking was... Um, using the same colors that we used for the ornaments and then the, um, the sky outside. Hopefully it won't be too much. Um, I just I don't want to really introduce any new colors in here. Um, we're just gonna kind of see how it goes. So I've got a few pencils beside me here. You guys will already know what pencils that we end up using and which ones we don't. So uh, let's just dive on into this. So I have the same colors that we used for um, the ornaments. So we're going to start off with those, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to make his hat blue, and I looked over a lot of pictures in the Hannah Lynn group, and you know, a lot of people did his hat and his coat the same colors, but the ones that stood out to me the most was the ones that used accents on his coat for the main color of the hat, and I don't know why, but that just kind of, I liked that a little bit more, it just didn't seem like too much, and um, it helps because I was worrying about the blue and the purple being too dominant in the image. Obviously, I'm like really overthinking this, which I shouldn't be. I should just relax and just go with it. So, I'm going to start with the purple. So, I've got my dioxazine purple hue here, and it's breaking on me for some reason. Why? I have never had problems with these pencils until lately. Oh no. <sighs> See, I know it's not my pencil sharpener, it's the pencils. Okay, finally got a little bit of a point here. Now he's small. So, I'm going to zoom in on the area that we're going to be working on today. I've got so much crap still all over my desk, but we're going to work with it. So I'm going to take the dioxazine purple hue and I'm going to use this um, for the shadows of the Nutcracker's coat. So um, again, I think we decided that our light was coming pretty much straight on, just slightly um, above her. So he's going to have a shadow here on his arm. So I'm just using a light to firm pressure. I'm not pressing too hard on the page, just enough to get the color in there. I don't really want to be doing too many layers, but I'm also just going to go over it a few times to really get that color in there. And then we'll fade it out towards the center. I'll do the same with a little bit up here. See, I'm going to put a shadow on his arm where her hand goes over it. So I'm recording this video in advance, but hopefully, um, hopefully you guys had uh, wonderful holidays. Um, I have about 
Let's see what day is it today? Today is Tuesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Tuesday the what? 19th? 18th? 19th. So 20th, 23, 24. So I've got about six days till Christmas. And I am freaking out. I'm just going to go over these shadows and darken them a little bit. Um, I still had two canvases to do, but thankfully, um, I found a present that I actually liked in the store for one of them, so now I only have one canvas to do, and I'll show you guys here. My niece absolutely loves Paw Patrol, so I'm painting her two favorite characters, which is Chase and Sky, and Sky will look a lot better when she's done, I promise. It's going to take me forever because I also wanted to do a background on this and I only have six more days and I am, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. But I wanted to get this done because I have no idea when I'm going to have time to finish this color along. So I'm just going to make time. It doesn't help that my hubby is going on holidays here soon. So that's another reason I feel really pressured to finish this. And I have no idea what is what on this nutcracker. I wish I had a picture to go off of, but I don't, so I'm just going to wing it. Okay, I'm going to put a shadow on this side of him here. Okay, so what I've done is I went back and looked at um, the image that I'm kind of going off of here uh, in respect to what is what on the Nutcracker, or what I would like to be what. And uh, so I don't know if you guys can really see, I did it extremely lightly because it doesn't really have to be done, I just did it so I can map out my colors. So I took my lightest color and I went over all the areas where that color is going to be. Um, you guys don't have to do that, I'm... basically it's just for mapping it out. Um, if you guys did want to do that though, um, I used just a little bit of lavender on all these areas here. Well, maybe not there, not there. Um, yeah, I, I just, I wouldn't bother doing that. Just follow along with me. We'll be okay. So, <clears throat> I'm still with the dioxazine purple hue. And I'm going to bring this shadow down to here. I'm going to put, I think, a little bit of a shadow... Just underneath here and on this side a little bit maybe. And then I think I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow here as well, which with the shadows I'm putting in, it's kind of making our lighting look a little off because technically these shadows wouldn't be here. This, these shadows are suggesting that the lighting's coming in from the left, but that's okay. Even if I'm unsure about shadows, I'll still put some in different places just because it gives it more depth, even if the shadows aren't 100% correct or even 50% correct. <clears throat> so next I'm switching to my Parma Violet and I'm going to blend that into the dioxazine purple hue. And then I'm going to fade it out right about here. It's right about at the middle of these buttons. Everywhere else, I'm going to blend into the dioxazine purple hue, and I'm going to try and fade it just enough to save a little bit for the lavender. I don't want them to be too dark, because I feel like our ornaments and our sky turned out really dark. So I'm actually going to, um, he's more kind of going to match the carpet than anything because I'm going to use white, I think, to blend him. Or 
maybe even just use a blending pencil so that way the colors don't get too dark. I'm not sure. Or maybe we'll just use the lavender to blend everything in. We'll have to see. Like I said, I'm very indecisive today and I'm not sure why. Okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna go back to the Doxazine Purple Hue here. And I'm gonna make the shadow down on his, I guess this really wouldn't be a belt, but I'm gonna make it a little bit farther in. So I'm gonna fade it out just towards his beard here. And then I'm gonna go in and blend with the Parma Violet again. And I'm gonna fade the Parma Violet out right about here. I'm gonna leave a little sliver here. Oh, sorry, not for the Parma Violet, the lavender. I'm gonna leave a little sliver there for the lavender, and then some on this side of his little coattail. Here. So after that's all done, I'm gonna go back in with Doc's in purple hue. I'm gonna use a very light pressure, and I'm just going to kind of go over our darkest shadows here. Just to make sure that color's in there, I don't want to lose it. But I also don't want it to be too dominant either, so that's why I'm using a very light pressure. I'm just going to go maybe right here. I'm just going to color this whole little triangle in. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the Parma Violet and I'm just going to blend a little bit more into that dioxazine purple hue. And remember at the beginning I said we weren't going to do that many layers today and I'm, I'm already off to a bad start with that. I just can't help it. Okay, now we're going to switch to the lavender. And just a light pressure. I'm just going to bring it into the Parma Violet a bit. So just going in on all these places where we've left a little bit of white for the lavender and I'm just blending it in just enough until the colors kind of look a little seamless. There we go, so I actually really like that. I feel like it's not too dark. So now I'm on the fence about whether I want to blend it with white or whether I want to blend it with a blender pencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white and I'm just going to lightly blend in this top area here. Don't need a firm pressure with the white, just a light pressure. I think I'm going to like that. So I'm going to use the white to blend. So I'm going to do that everywhere. Just a light pressure, small circles. And when you're blending, you want to make sure that you're blending into the other colors. See, and the beauty about this, because I don't want it to be too light, so I can blend with the white pencil and oops, with using that light pressure, um, if I can't get rid of all of that white that I want to out of the page, I can still go back in with my blender pencil 
then I can use that to finish blending in the colors without them being too dark. And I totally forgot that my mother was coming into town today and she is already here so I'm gonna have to finish this up later. Hopefully I remember where we were. Okay. All right, I am back from shopping. And my cat keeps losing his catnip mouse. So I have to keep grabbing it for him because instead of being smart, he places it in the same space that he keeps losing it. His cats are weird. Okay, so I can't remember if we've gone over everything with the white or just the arm. It looks like just the arm, so I'm going to assume. I could watch back into the video, but now that I'm finally done my shopping, I don't know when my hubby's going to be home, so I'd rather just get this done. So I'm just going to take my white and I'm just going to blend it into everywhere that we've colored so far. Light pressure. So I'm glad I can finally say that my Christmas shopping is officially done. Now I just gotta finish the last canvas I have to do and then I can actually relax. I'm hoping to be able to color another image out of this book eventually before this month is over. We'll have to see. I won't be doing it on YouTube though, I'll just be doing it on my own. So now I'm just going to take my blending pencil and I'm just going to finish blending in all these areas. And I'm going to keep a piece of paper close by just to clean my blending pencil off onto because I don't want to be bringing any of the darker areas into the lighter areas and mucking it up. I almost feel hungover even though I didn't drink last night, but I did stay up until 1.30 in the morning last night reading. Um, my mom reads an author called Lisa Jackson and I got into those stories back when I was a teenager so I always had to wait for my mom to finish a book before I could read it. And so my mom just finished reading one not too long ago, just a couple days ago, and I started it. And I just have not been able to put it down. Thankfully, it's only 400 pages long, and I started it two days ago, and I only have 100 pages left to go. So once it's finished, it's finished. one of those books that you just you need to know what happens and what's going on there's just so many secrets and I want to know all of them and as crazy as it is for those of you who know that I'm in Canada looks like we might actually get a white Christmas we have barely had any this is December and you can still see the grass usually we have like I don't know probably like four feet of snow by now Maybe more, maybe less. I'm bad at measurements, but usually we have a lot of snow and we've barely had any this year, which is crazy. Okay, so now I'm going to take the Indian Throne Blue 
And let's see, I think I'm going to start on his jacket with this. So I'm just going to continue in where I have shadows and such. So. I'm gonna put a shadow in here too. What are you trying to she wanna step under there now? You silly cat. Oh no. <laughs> I did not want to color this purple, but I guess we're gonna go with that now. So I'm going to take uh, an eraser and just erase this blue that I just put in here. We're going to have to go back in with the purple. Oh, that blue doesn't erase very good. Okay. So we're just going to quickly fix that. I'm going to go back in with the dioxazine purple hue. Seriously, did you get it stuck under there again? That's behind you. Come on, dude. And then I'm going to switch to the Parma Violet. And then the lavender. I'm going to follow the same steps to make it match completely. So I'm going to go in with the white and just kind of blend it out a little bit. And then in with the blending pencil. Just burnish it a little bit. Oh well. Okay. Now uh, carrying on with the end and throne blue. shadow on either side of his beard here. And then I'm going to use his pants as well. So I'm just going to pretty much completely color in this area here. And then I'm just going to give a slight shadow going towards the left of his leg. And another shadow just down here. It's going to be mostly dark down here, but I'm going to leave a little bit of area for our medium blue. And then I'm also going to... I'm just going to kind of outline this V here. Just going to fade it up a little bit. I'm going to keep it shadowed where her arm kind of goes over. I think that looks good, and you yeah, know, let's let's keep carrying on. Let's do his hat too. So I want to keep our shadows kind of towards the bottom of the hat. I don't. There's probably an actual term for this, but I'm just gonna call it a hat, even though I feel like that's probably wrong. So I'm going to keep the shadows there for the most part, and then again I'm going to keep the shadows here. Just closer to the bottom of this dome shape. Stitch, what are you doing? Okay, so next we're going to switch to, I just gotta get my pencils a little mixed up here, uh, violet blue. Just continuing with that light pressure, we're going to blend it a little bit into the end and throne blue. I want to bring that up to about pretty much to the top here. I'm just going to very lightly put some in here where our sky blue light will be blended into, so there will be a little bit down here, but it'll mostly be the darker colors. And then I'm just going to do the same thing here. Thank 
crazy kitty. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the In and Throne Blue and I'm just going to get some of that color more in there. I am going to go fairly dark with the blue. Um, I want the shadows in the blue to be really dark and very dense. So I'm using a fairly firm pressure in at the bottoms here and then gradually fading it up. I'm going to do the same thing at the top here. Again, we're going to switch to our violet blue and we're going to use a fairly firm pressure to blend it into that end and throne blue, but we're going to lighten it up fairly quick. And we're going to do that in all of the shadowed areas. Hopefully the lighting is okay. Let's see if this light helps. Maybe I'll keep this light on. It's pretty gray out today since it's snowing. I have to say, Christmas is probably my favorite time of year for so many different reasons. Um, one reason being that's usually when my hubby takes his holidays, so he usually gets a large chunk of time off around the end of the year, which I always look forward to. And also because it's just cold outside usually, so I don't really have to leave my house. I'm kind of a hermit. I don't. I love my house. I like staying in it all the time. And the cold gives me a reason to just kind of cuddle up with a warm blanket and some hot cocoa and watch some movies or color or do whatever which is super nice. So here I'm going to switch to the Blue Violet Lake and I'm going to use a fairly firm pressure to start off with here. Not completely burnishing but just a fairly firm pressure and I'm actually going to lighten it up as we go out because I am going to use a little bit of the white. I want to keep the tips of this really light so that it contrasts really well with the darker shadows that we have going on. And then of course my other favorite part of Christmas is seeing the rest of my family too, which is always nice. At the very top, I'm just going to fade it up slightly. That's where our white's going to be. Oh, and I forgot about the rim to his. I believe that's the rim to his hat. I think. Let's go in with the end of throne blue there. I'm going to come in just along bottom line with this. Just fade it out just slightly. And I'm going to switch to the violet blue. I'm pretty much going to follow the same steps that we did for the rest of the hat. Because 
except I'm not going to go over it twice, I'm just going to go right into the Violet Blue Lake. I want to keep this part fairly dark since it's technically the underside of the hat. Or the rim of the hat, I suppose. So I'm going to blend this in with the Violet Blue Lake. Or Blue Violet Lake. I'm going to redefine those shadows with the End and Throne Blue. And just kind of blend it up a little bit and then I'm going to leave it as it is. I'll probably finish that off with the blending pencil. And next I'm going to switch to my white. I'm going to clean off any purple residue I have on it. Because I usually forget. You are a silly kitty, you know that? Are you happy you have your mice back? You missed them, didn't you? Okay, so I'm going to use my white just on the tips here, and I'm going to bring it in a little bit. Probably to about the Indian Throne, or the Violet Blue. Just to lighten it up a little bit. And let's, um, let's grab the end and throw them blue and put a little bit at the top of this little nib here. And then we'll just finish that off with the blue violet lake. So next I'm going to switch to my burnishing pencil. And I'm just going to use small circles to blend everything together. On the rim of the hat, I'm going to start in the shadows and I'm going to kind of drag them upwards towards the top. There we go. Clean it off. Jesus, okay. Careful. This cat's going to give me a heart attack. Okay. And here I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to start in the lighter areas and I'm going to bring it down into the darker areas. And just remember to clean off your pencil every time you go into a darker area or turn it to make sure that you're not going to get that muddiness in your lighter area. I did not think that this nutcracker would take that long to color, but I bet it'll probably take us like an hour. <laughs> so I'm going to assume that our videos are going to average about an hour and a half, the longest one being an hour more than that, but that was with the skin and the clothing, so that's to be expected. So here, just so I don't have to clean my pencil off as much, I'm going to blend from this area all the way around into the medium blue. And then from there, I'm going to go into the darker areas. And then I don't have to worry too much about cleaning off my pencil. So there's that part done. We're going to move down to here. So next we're going to move to the violet blue and we're just going to blend that into our shadowed areas. Fade it out.
And then we're going to switch to our Blue Violet Lake. And we're going to try and keep it a little bit lighter as we get to the edges. But it's okay if we can't in some spaces. And then we're going to switch to our white and just bring up about halfway in, just very lightly. So next I'm going to take my blending pencil and I'm just going to do the same thing as I did with the hat. I'm going to blend from the lighter areas into the darker areas where I can. get it stuck under there again. Stitch, did you get it stuck again? Hey, silly boy, I'll help you in a minute. Jeez, for once, instead of my son, it's the cat being a little bit of a nuisance today. Carbon is tuckered out from our shopping trip and just enjoying relaxing playing on his phone. Some areas where he kind of know that I didn't clean off my blender pencil, I still turned it knowing that there was no residue on the other side of it. So be very careful with that. I like how he's turning out so far and you know hindsight is 2020. I wish I would have done her eyes green and actually I probably would have done the ornaments on the tree probably silver too because um, a lot of the details on him are going to be with silver. So I think it'll be okay. Just drink a water here quick. So now we're going to switch back to our blues um, or our purple, sorry. So I'm going to grab the dioxazine purple hue, I'm going to start on the boot here, I'm just going to work in this area and then move up to the top of the hat, I'm not going to work back and forth. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of this diamond area. It's a really small area so I'm not going to worry about the parma violet, I'm going to go straight in with the lavender. And then just kind of work that together. Go in with the white, which still had blue on it. I forgot about that. That's okay. And then the blending pencil, which I misplaced. Where did I put that? Oh, right here. There we go. It's okay, guys. I'm just losing my mind a little bit. He's 24 minutes already. This guy's taking a long time. Okay, so next, dioxazine purple. I'm going to put in at the bottoms of these. I'm going to do kind of like the same that we did with the hat. I'm going to kind of make it shadowed from the bottom going up to some lighter colors. Okay, 
Okay, I'm also going to... Hmm... I think I'm going to skip the dioxazine purple hue for the tops there. Um, I'm going to switch to Parma Violet. I'm going to blend that into the dioxazine purple hue and I'm going to fade it off pretty fast. I don't want this being too dark. I want to keep it pretty light. Um, these little triangles here, I'm just going to color all of these in with the Parma Violet. Well, all of these on the bottom. You, you can see what I mean. It's hard to explain. Okay, and then these little arches here. I'm going to start off with the Parma Violet as my shadow, pretty much. And then I'm going to fade it off going up. Dude, I guess a little poop getting into everything. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing here, um, the bottom of these little half oval things, I'm going to color this in with the Parma Violet as well. And then we're going to switch to the lavender and just lightly go over everything. And then after that, I'm going to switch back to the white, and I'm just going to lightly blend everything together. And then we'll go back in with the blender pencil and just kind of blend everything together. I have to be careful on these arch areas because of those black lines, so I'm just kind of going in up and down direction that the lines are going, so that way I don't smudge the lines into the colors that we have already. Um, I'm going to take the docks, the same purple hue, and I'm just going to color in these little circles here. I know there's lots of tiny little details, bear with me. Okay, I think that's everything for the purple and blue. I'm going to quickly check my reference image, and I'll be right back. Alright, so I think that this is it for our um, purples and blues. So I'm going to go ahead and put those away. So I also have all of my cool grays out. And the reason I decided to do uh, the accents on the Nutcracker in grey is because um, I think that grey and purple go really well together. So I'm probably not going to use the 90%. We're going to start off with maybe the 70%. i got to find my color book here. Let's see how dark is the 70%. I think that'll be perfect. Yeah, we'll use the 70% for our shadows. So I'm going to start with the hat and I'm going to start with these top bits here and I'm just kind of going to outline this shape and then fade it in. I'm going to do the same on this side. Same here but I'm not going to do the bottom. So I'm just going to go around this arc. I'm going to outline this shape. And this shape, just the top of this shape. Okay. Next, I'm going to switch to my 50% cool gray, and I'm going to put this in just on the bottoms 
of these areas here and I'm going to fade them up just like we did with the purple. So next with the 30% I'm going to kind of blend into um, the darker gray on these all these little circle areas. I'm not going to blend it in completely in the center. I'm going to go in with a lighter color for that. Next is 20% cool gray, which needs to be sharpened. So I'm just going to blend that into the gray that we had here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my 10% gray and I'm going to finish off this area. And then I'm actually going to take my white. I'm going to make sure that there's no residue on it from any of the other colors that we've used so far. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to finish off these circles and actually go over pretty much everything here with the white. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us kind of a similar effect that a gemstone would without half as much effort. Um, for most of these little bits, I plan on using a gel pen, but um, I think these little triangles here, I'm going to do it with the 70% cool gray. So I'm just going to go lightly over them, kind of get this darker color in there, but then I'm actually going to finish it off with the 20% cool gray, so I'm just going to use this to kind of blend that color in there. So it's not too dark. There, just like that. So, um, for the finishing details on this part, you could choose to go back over these circles with uh, the black to kind of make them more defined. I think what I might do is I might actually just go over them with white instead. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I want to try and see if that looks okay, and I'm not too worried because if I don't like it, I can just go back in with a black pencil over top of the white anyways, so uh, it should be okay. I haven't really thought much about the Nutcracker's face or his eyes either, so I'll have to think on that. While we finish off his jacket and maybe even his boots... So I'm gonna go. What's up, kiddo? My phone died. Your phone died. Yeah, so I want to play a BJ on my TV. Okay, put this down. Okay. You give me a couple minutes, I'll put your zombie game on for you, okay? Okay. So here I've got the 70% cool gray, and I'm just gonna go in on either side of this carbon. Leave it alone, please. Okay. Not too much, and then I'm just gonna fade it out. I'm going to put a little bit in the corner here, fade it out, a little bit in the corner here, fade it out, um, 
here in this corner and then just kind of underneath his hair. Basically just at the top of this and then we'll do the same on the other side. And then I'm going to kind of outline his beard on this area here, just because his beard is going to be really light and it's also going to be in grays, but I'm going to use the French grays for his hair just to kind of make it a little different, but that way they don't blend in with each other. And then I'm also going to put a little bit on either side of this boot and then at the V on this part of his boot. Okay. So I'm going to go straight to the 30% and I'm just going to blend into the dark grey and just kind of fade out. Try to leave just a sliver of uncolored page on either side of these little things here. I guess they'd probably be like the lapels of his jacket, maybe. And look down here, I'm going to try and leave little bits of white for highlight, which we're going to go in with the 20% and finish all of this off. All of these little dots here I'm going to go in with a gel pen for. Um, if you guys don't have gel pens, I would recommend uh, maybe using the 50% cool gray and the 20% cool gray. I'd use the 50% to create just a little bit of a shadow and then the 20% just to blend it all in together. Hopefully I've been in frame. I haven't really been paying attention. Okay, I like that. I feel like this was also supposed to be grey. Hmm. Let's do his boots first and then we'll figure that out. So for his boots, um, I'm going to grab out the black. Carbon, what are you doing? What are you doing? You don't play in the water, please. So I'm going to take the black and I'm just going to kind of outline either side of his boot. Fade it in towards the center. I'm going to do the same on this side. Again, these little dots on his boot, I'm going to do a gel pen too, so I'm not going to worry too much about them, but if you're not going to use gel pen for these, I would suggest trying to steer clear of them and then using the same colors as the dots on his jacket. So from there, I want to kind of give a shadow on this part of his boot here, just bring it out a little bit. And then, pretty much just going to outline this bottom part of his boot. It's going to be fairly dark. So after that, I'm going to switch to 90% cool gray. And I'm 
just gonna go over that black and bring it in just slightly. I'm gonna go over it a little bit down here too, but I'm not gonna touch this bottom square part. I don't want it getting too dark. That's usually my flaw. And then I'm gonna skip 70, and I think I'm gonna finish this off with the 50%. which I'm going to go over everything and blend it in with this. I'll probably have to come in with the blending pencil as well, it looks like. The only trouble I find about these grays is they're so soft that they really take out the lines. Carbon, is that you in the tree or is that the kitty? Stay out of there, please. Okay. I like that. I'm going to grab my blending pencil and I'm going to blend from the shadows inwards. Using a really light pressure because I don't really want to smudge any of the black lines already in the book. Glance back at my reference image and get my kiddo situated. So there's one more area I want to gray and that is these little things here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the 70% and I'm going to create a shadow right underneath his head. And then I'm going to go to 30% and I'm going to fade that out. A little bit further, going over the initial gray we just put down. There's so many numbers in my head right now, I can't remember which one it was. I'm going to get this 50%. And then we're going to finish off with 20%, just like we did with everything else. Okay, so that's it for the gray pencils. Well, the cool gray pencils, anyways. Okay, so next we're going to do his hair, which I have 50%, 30%, and 20% French gray out for. I'm going to start off with the 50%, and... Basically, on all these little lines, I'm just going to create a little bit of a shadow behind most of them. Just going to follow them with the pencil and then just kind of fade them out just very slightly. Not by much, there's not much room to work with. After I'm done with that, I'm going to go in with the 30%. And I'm just going to blend out a little bit from those lines, just leaving a little bit of space for our last color. I'm going to put a little bit of this at the bottom here.
I'm just being super messy with this. There, I'm not really going to be careful at all. Just kind of putting the color in there and moving quickly. And that's if I'm moving quickly, it's on purpose because that's how I get my messy look. I just try not to think about it as I go. And then I'm just going to finish everything off with the 20% gray, so pretty much just going to go over everything. And that is it for his hair. So next I kind of wanted to figure out his sword and his uh, wooden stand that he's on. Um, carbon rain. Don't you tell me no, I'll turn your game off. So I'm actually going to go back in with the cool grays that I used for the rest of it for the sword. Um, I originally thought about maybe just doing like a brown sheath for the sword, but I think I'm going to keep it gray just to balance out the amount of grays that we have at the top here. So I'm going to use the same grays that I used in the majority of everything. So it's 70% I'm going to start with. And I'm going to put a shadow here and then a shadow to the right. I'm just going to fade it out. And then 30%, we're going to blend into that and bring it out a little bit more. Leaving that line for our lightest color. Which was, it was the, I picked it because it was the pointiest pencil I had. That's French grey. Should be 20% cool grey. And we're just going to blend that in over everything here. So, the stand that he's on, I wanted to keep it more of a chocolate kind of grey, or chocolate kind of brown. So I'm going to grab Dark Umber, find that, okay that's this one. So we've got dark umber. Dark brown. And chocolate. So I'm going to start with the dark umber, which I'm going to make shadows towards the back of this stand that the nutcracker is on. I'm going to fade it out about halfway. I'm going to shadow this side of the stand as well, as well as behind his feet. And then I'm going to create a shadow underneath here. Sorry for the bad lighting, my hand's kind of in the way, but this is a awkward position. Ma? What? Look! Thank you. Ma, look. I'm 
also going to do the same thing on the other side of that. Basically going to outline this whole shape here. And it's super tiny, I'm not even going to bother fading it out. I apologize for my child and his ramminess. If you talk like that again, I'm going to shut it off. No. Don't you tell me no. no. Oh, kids are awesome. I can't wait till hubby's home and he gets to deal with most of it. I keep saying how much he wants to spend time with our child. And oh man, I love my son. But his attitude lately is he's really coming into that four-year-old mark. So next I'm going to take dark brown and I'm going to blend it in over top of the dark umber and then just kind of fade it out a little bit further. I'm not pushing too hard, I'll probably just use a blender pencil to finish it off. Pushing enough and going over enough to really get that color in there. I'm not going to touch this bottom area here. I'm going to take my chocolate and I'm going to go just lightly over it. Again, just enough to get that color in there. But other than that, I want to keep it light. And then I'm going to take my chocolate. I'm going to blend it into all the other colors. And... I'm going to kind of leave a little bit of this white line at the very front of the stand here. And then I'm going to clean off my blender pencil and sharpen it if I can. It's getting pretty tiny. Let's see what I can do here. It a little sharper. So I'm going to start, let's see, stand up and move here a little bit. I'm going to start by blending into this area, just bringing just a little bit of that chocolate in there. And then I'm going to work my way into the darker areas. Now my reasoning for doing that is it kind of created a lighter version of that chocolate because not so much of the pigment was placed in there. Which kind of keeps it as a highlight. So here I'm going to try and stay in the middle and then work my way out to the edges where we have that dark umber. There we go. Lastly, for colored pencil anyways, or for main colored pencil, is um, the Nutcracker Splash. Sorry, I was trying to uh, think if this part was his hand or if it was actually this part, but I, th I think I got it right. Okay. So I want him to be really light in color. And a little bit more on the pink side, I think. So I'm going to be using Deco Peach because it's kind of an in-between yellow-pink. And we're going to be using Nectar. That's going to be as dark as we're going to get. If I can find that here. Okay. So we've got Nectar and Deco Peach. So I think the other color I'm going to use is peach. Those are the only colors I'm going to use for him. Maybe white, and that's about it. Oh, and we still have to do his eyes too. Forgot about those. So I'm going to take the nectar, and I'm basically just going to lightly put it in all around his face. A shadow there on where his nose would be, and there. 
And then to the right of his hand and underneath his shirt sleeve. Okay, and that is as dark as he's getting. So I'm going to go in with the peach next. I'm going to blend into that nectar and just bring it out a little bit more. Still using that really light pressure. Your game froze again. Okay, you give me a minute. I'll grab it, okay? Don't touch. Out, please. They're coming. No, out. I'm coming out. Thank you. Carbon. Out. Hey, apologies. So lastly, well maybe lastly, might still go in with some white. So I'm gonna use the deco peach. I'm going to use a little bit of a firmer pressure. I'm going to blend into all of the colors we've used so far. And I'm just going to bring it out. And I think, I don't think we'll need the white. I think that's, it's light enough for what I wanted. So I'm going to put this in on all the areas that have still got um, white areas. And then I'm just going to Blend it in and go over top, just slightly increasing my pressure to burnish areas. And I think that that is it for our nutcracker as well. Um, actually, I feel like there was one other. Oh, right, his eyes. That's right. Okay, so I wanted to do green eyes for him. And I'm kind of leaning more towards the light green as our lightest color. So I'm going to grab that out. I'm also going to grab cobalt turquoise. And I think those are the only two colors I'm going to use. So first I'm going to go in with the light green and I'm going to use just a light to firm pressure to lay that color in there. And then I'm going to switch to the cobalt turquoise and just up at the tops here I'm going to use a firm pressure and just lighten it as I come down. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, firm pressure at the top, lighten it as you come down. And then I'm going to blend the light green into the area where we lightened it out, which is going to kind of create a bit of a third green. He's in a fairly firm pressure now with the light green, and that is it. That's his eyes. So I'm going to write all those colors down and then we are going to get into the final touches. I'll be right back. Lilies with final touches, we're going to be working all over the page. So um, I don't plan on doing much else aside from black and white, which is my usual. So um, usually for my black, I will use uh, the black Prisma pencil. I find that it is opaque enough to pretty much go over almost anything, even burnished areas. And usually for my white, I use um, my, sorry, I had to shake the camera, my Uni Posca pen, oops, but um, I actually, I don't know if I said this when I, uh, the last video I made, but I actually found that they had the Uni Ball Signo Broad 
pens in at Michael's and I heard a lot of great things about this pen so I had to pick one up and if I am completely honest this has probably um, become my new favorite white pen even over the Posca and I actually tested it out in my book here So right there you can see that the Courage Jelly Roll, which is the first one that I ever got, is probably the worst out of all of them. Um, the Uni Posca pen is fairly white, but it's just not as white as the Signo pen. Um, my only complaint is that the Signo pen is a little bit thicker. They didn't have um, any thinner ones, and I'm not sure... I don't even think this even says... The measurements of it but um, I don't think it's more because it's thicker I just think uh, the the ink itself is thicker than the Posca pen so um, another reason that I'm going to use this is because I don't know what I last colored with my Posca pen but as you can see it's got a little bit of gray to it so I kind of I don't know what I did to it I don't know if this is normal or if I transferred something and didn't realize and now it's like stuck in there, but it doesn't matter how much I clean it, I still... Oh, actually, maybe. I think I might have just got rid of it. I like, I scribbled for like probably 20 minutes with this the other day and I could not get the gray to go away, but I think maybe I did it. Well, that's good, because I do like this pen. Um, I think I used it for a painting or something, which is probably not a good idea. I need to get myself a pen for basically just coloring and for painting. But I'm going to use my Signo pen anyways. Um, the only other thing I was thinking about using was some stickles. Um, I'm thinking about putting some stickles either on the snow or on the window itself to kind of make the window look reflective. Although I'll probably just put stickles on the snow maybe. I'm not 100% sure yet. But let's um, let's dive in and let's do our black first, I think. So um, the first thing that I wanted to kind of bring back was this ribbon on this cardboard box. So I'm just going to take my black pencil and I'm just going to very carefully go over these lines. I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm not going to zoom in for this. Um, there's a few parts on the nutcracker that I kind of wanted to bring back. So these parts on his shoulder, I don't want to bring them back to be in full black if I can help it. But I am going to bring them back a little bit. Same with these lines on his lapel here. Maybe these ones too. I think first what I'm going to do with this hat is I'm going to first just kind of go over with the black and see if I like that or not. So I think it would be easier just to go over this with the white to get rid of it than it would be to over with the white and then the black and I actually don't mind that so I might leave it as is. So I'm going to color in his uh, pupils here. I'm going to touch up his beard a little bit. Or mustache I mean, sorry. And other than that, I think what I'm going to do... Oh, I, <laughs> I'm zoomed out, I don't have to move my page. See, I get in the habit, but then other times I forget. So I'm going to darken up just these horizontal lines on his boots. Oh yeah, I guess I'm going to be using a gel pen too, but I'll probably do that last. You okay, kiddo? Yeah. Actually, I might want to do that first. Just because I do want to go over the gel pen with some white highlights still too. So I'm going to grab, um, 
I have two silvers in my gel pen set. I have a sparkly one and a metallic one. I'm going to grab my metallic one. And um, if anybody's curious, the gel pen set I have is just this Fiskars 48 gel pens. It was the cheapest. I think I paid like 20 bucks for this. So I'm just going to go over all of these little white areas that we left. I'm just going to go over with my gel pen, and it's really light, so it's hard to tell if it's even coming out. Okay, I think it is. I'm going to have to kind of use the light to shine on it to let me know. I need to move the page. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I actually might not even go over those with the light. I might just leave them as they are. But at least that's out of the way now, so um, I'm going to kind of start over here on the ornaments and I'm just going to kind of put in some white highlights on all these ornaments, just little tiny dots on the smaller ornaments, nothing too major. i got to be careful to keep my hand out of that gel pen, that's kind of why I want to do that last. Notice there's this little bit of uh, um, like the top of an ornament that's showing there. I just kind of left it white, and I'll probably just leave it white because it looks okay. But if you wanted to color that in, you probably could. I'd use like silver or something. So now I'm just going to go over. I'm going to put a bunch of white dots in the window. I am going to color in the circles that Hannah has already as well as just kind of make some of my own little smaller tiny dots. I can't really see all of, I can see some of the circles, but I can't see all of them. So I'm also just going to draw these just random little lines on some of the window panes just to kind of make it look like a window. Maybe on like all of them, just one or two on like all of them. I like that, okay. And then I am just going to kind of color in the snow here. I'm going to get rid of the black outlines on the snow. which will help make it look more like snow. Okay, so let me just did the snow went on the tree, we did the ornaments, still have to do her eyes, and I thought about putting some 
highlights on the Nutcracker as well. I will on these um, those circles right here just to kind of make them look a little bit more like gems. But other than that, I don't think we're going to do much there. So I'm going to take my black again if I can find where I put it. Where did I put it? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Okay. So hopefully this gel pen is dry enough. Okay, I think it's good. So I'm going to go in over top of her eyelashes and I'm going to very carefully just make them really black. Very carefully. apologize for having to flip my book this way, but I don't want to touch that white pen that we just put down. I also do not have the patience to wait for it to dry, and I don't want to wreck her mascara either. So then I'm also going to pretend that she has eyeliner on, so I'm going to darken up this line under her eye, and the line that is her eye. And just looking at the difference between these eyes, it's crazy how much difference just making that those eyelashes black makes. It's a huge difference. It really makes it a lot more dramatic. Especially since they get kind of lost when you color the hair and skin. Now that that's done, I'm going to go back in with my white pen and I'm going to give her some highlights. So I'm going to do my usual star highlights. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do one bigger one one smaller one. I'm going to do this kind of shooting star kind of look here. I think I'm going to leave it like that. That actually might be a bit much. I'm not sure if I like that. You know what? Let's leave it. I think it's Christmassy. So next I'm just going to put in some... Oh, I don't even know if this is going to show up. There we go some little white highlights on these gray areas. Which really makes them look like stone and then I'm going to give him a highlight and sparkle in his eyes too and I'm just going to do my usual two dots for him. Nothing too crazy. Okay. Her eyes are growing on me. I think I like it. So that is the image completely done. Um, I absolutely love just this tiny little window scene outside. Um, I'm actually hoping to do a larger winter scene like that, hopefully. So I absolutely love doing that. Um, I think just that little portion really makes the whole picture. But just everything all in all I'm really happy with this there is a few changes I would make like I said I probably would have done um, the ornaments in gold instead maybe or maybe even gray but I really like the colors I think they work well with each other um, trying not to put too many colors in an image is always a challenge for me and I know for a lot of you as well so and again, like I said, with pictures, distance is your friend because although she looks almost flawless, almost, you get up close, 
and there's still lots and lots of speckled areas. But the farther she goes, the less you can tell, especially when it's blurry. <laughs> Anyways, that is it for this color along. We are officially done. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, as I said, I don't plan on doing another color along for a little bit. I'm going to take a bit of a break and I have some art videos and some other videos that I plan on releasing in the new year. Uh, we will do a color book flip and just a color book collection look and all that fun stuff. But yeah, I think we're done. So I will see you guys in one of my next videos. Take care. I hope your holidays were awesome. And enjoy the rest of your guys' year.